Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to the next video in the AWS Amplify playlist, where we'll host a React app using Amplify hosting. If you've been following along with the videos in this playlist, you'll recall the progression from installing the AWS Amplify CLI, then creating a React app, configuring Amplify in the app, then adding Amplify authentication, storage, and an API. Then we added our own custom authentication to the app using the Amplify Authentication API. In this video, I'll be hosting the React app I built in the custom authentication video. And since the focus of this video is on Amplify hosting and not on React, I won't be taking a deep dive into the code. If you want to follow along in the complete build of the app and haven't yet watched the prior videos in the playlist, I recommend doing so. And if you're looking for an actual course on React, I highly recommend the Udemy course, React, the Complete Guide by Maximilian Schwarzmuller. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. First, inside my project folder, I'll execute Amplify init to initialize Amplify in the project. I'll take the default project name suggested by Amplify, say no to initialize with the above configuration, and change the environment to prod, which we'll use in Amplify hosting. Then I'll take the defaults for the rest of the settings. Next, I'll add Amplify Auth. I'll take the default configuration, indicate that users will sign in with their username, then select No, I'm done. Now I'll add Amplify Storage. This will be for content, and I'll give the resource a name of Contact App, and the bucket name of Contact App as well. Authenticated users will have create, read, and update access, and I'll say no to adding a Lambda trigger. Finally, I'll add an Amplify API. This will be a GraphQL API, and I'll use the single object with fields template. Then say yes to edit the schema now. I'll change the sample to do template to be a model for a contact, the model will have a field for an ID, which will be type ID, as well as properties for name, email, cell, and profile pick path, which will all be required strings. Now I'll save the schema and jump back into a terminal and run Amplify status. And here we see the auth, storage, and API resources are ready to be created so now I'll run Amplify Push to provision the resources on AWS. Now, if we jump into the AWS Amplify console, we see our contact app with authentication, file storage, and API configured. And if we jump into Cognito, we see our user pool. In S3, we see our Amplify deployment bucket and our prod environment bucket for storing contact profile picks and a DynamoDB table for storing contact details. Now, I'll jump back into a terminal and test the app out locally. I'll go ahead and register a user. And validate, then jump back into Cognito and we can see the user is confirmed. Now, I'll log in. And I'm taken to the contacts page where I'll complete the form and add a contact.
And now if we jump into our S3 bucket, we see the profile pic was uploaded. And in the DynamoDB table, we see our contacts info. Okay, things are looking pretty good functionality wise. So let's take a few moments and check out the Amplify implementation in the code. Starting with the package.json file, we see I've added dependencies for AWS Amplify and AWS Amplify UI React. In the app.js file, I've imported Amplify and AWS exports, as well as the UI React styles. I've also passed AWS exports to Amplify configure. In the app function, I've added a constant in the state to hold authentication status and a function to manage the auth status. I've also added routes, and here we see a site nav component element which takes the is authenticated constant and the update function. Jumping into the site nav component, we see an import for auth from AWS Amplify, as well as a handle logout function, which is called from the on click event handler of the logout button. And there are also nav links to the login and register component routes. In the register component, we again see the auth import and a handle register function called on click of the register button. In the validation component, there's the import for auth and a handle registration confirmation function called on click of the validate button. And in the login component, we have the auth import and a handle login function called on click of the login button. Then upon successful authentication, there's a redirect to the contacts component. Finally, inside the contacts component, we see the imports for API, GraphQL operations, and storage from AWS Amplify, as well as the list contacts query and create contacts mutation functions. There are get contacts and add new contact functions as well as a use effect hook, which calls get contacts. The get contacts function is an asynchronous function, which passes the GraphQL operation for list contacts to the GraphQL API, then populates the contacts array in the React state with the data returned from the API call. The data in the contacts array is what's used to display the contacts on the page. The add new contact function is also an asynchronous function, which stores the contacts profile pic in S3, creates a new contact object literal, then persists the contact in DynamoDB via the create contact GraphQL operation, passing the new contact as input. Then the get contacts function is called again to get the current contacts from the table. Again, if you would like a more in-depth walkthrough of the code, feel free to check out the other videos in the playlist. Okay, with our AWS resources provisioned and an overview of the code complete, I'll push it up to a GitHub repo so Amplify Hosting can access it for deployment. Now, with the code in the repo, let's jump back into the Amplify console and click the Hosting Environments tab. Under Host a Web App, I'll select GitHub for source control, then click Connect Branch. Then I'll select my project repo, and install and authorize Amplify. Now I'll select the repo and the branch, then click Next. Here I'll select the environment, which for us is prod, then select an existing service role, which I already have created. If you're doing this for the first time, you most likely won't have a service role. So go ahead and click the create new role button and take all the defaults through the pages, which are launched in a new browser tab. Then come back and refresh the list and select your new role. Now I'll scroll down and click next, then save and deploy. 
and now the deployment is starting. As we can see, it's been provisioned and is now in the build phase. And after several minutes, the build and deploy phases are complete. So we can access the amplified hosting URL, then log into the app, and we see our contact listed. Now, there's one more feature in Amplify Hosting that I'd like to show you, and that's previews. Previews can be used to, well, preview changes that are made to the code before they're merged to the main branch and deployed into our prod hosting environment. And as we can see, by default, previews are disabled. So to demo this, I'll click the preview menu item, click enable previews, then install the GitHub app. As we can see, my repo is already selected, so I'll click Save. And if we jump back into previews, we see the preview for our main branch listed, but it's still in disabled status. So I'll select it and click Manage. Then I'll check to enable pull request previews, then point all pull requests for this branch to our existing prod environment and confirm. And now the preview is enabled. So let's jump back into a terminal and create a new branch. Then I'll make a change to the code to add the version number in the heading and now push the code to the V2 branch. And back in the repo, we see our new change was pushed. So I'll create a pull request. Then if we jump back into the Amplify console and look at our app, we'll see there is no deployment in progress in our main branch. But if we jump into the preview, we see the status is in progress. And if we go into the deployment, we'll see it's been provisioned and is now being built. And after several minutes with the build and deploy complete, we can access the preview domain, log in, and we see our changes are deployed. However, I don't like this change, so I'm going to jump back into GitHub and close the pull request. However, before I close the pull request, I wanna show you this message from Amplify Integration indicating that the pull request is automatically being deployed by Amplify Hosting. And if we had chosen to merge this pull request from the V2 branch into the main branch, Amplify Hosting would have automatically deployed the code to our prod environment. Now I'll scroll down and close the request. And now if we go back to our prod environment deployment and log in, we see the original app deployment. So that concludes this video on hosting a React app using Amplify Hosting. If you found it interesting, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to be notified when I add more content to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.